Hey, Brooke, how are you? Very good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So uh, again, without any further ado, maybe I will just send it over to you. Please do take it away. Great. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Brock. Uh, let me share my screen here. I work for a company here in the US named FrameBridge. Uh, FrameBridge uh, helps people build custom frames, uh, modernizing custom framing. And we uh, have been using Spree for quite a while and have uh, a lot of similar lessons and similar challenges. Um, so first, uh, about FrameBridge, we are making uh, framing really simple and, and joyous for, for everybody. So the idea is you go onto our website, before you get into the Add to Cart, you design your frame, talk about what you're gonna frame. We do renderings on the site, so you can actually see a preview of your frame, which is pretty neat. Once you've um, built your frame, designed it, you then uh, go through the order checkout process, send us your artwork. If it's a physical piece, uh, literally you're mailing it to us. If it is a uh, digital piece, you're uploading it. We then build a frame around it send it back to you ready to hang on the wall. Um, we also have a, a large um, retail cycle in Q4, so it spikes up a lot in Q4 because it makes a very good gift. Um, so let's see what we got here. So it's custom. It's not quite like selling um, you know, t-shirts and um, simple uh, product variants. Every single item is unique, if nothing else, because of the artwork that's getting um, attached to that piece. Um, but everything we do is made to order. <clears throat> we uh, cut the molding ourselves, we cut the, the acrylic and the mat, and everything is down to an eighth of an inch of specificity. So we, um, we have a lot of extra data that we collect and then we have to track. Um, and then also, because we're handling other people's physical pieces, um, we also have extra steps where we need to send them packaging and they send us up back their artwork and then we send it. So it's called three leg packaging. So um, Spree ended up being a really great choice for us because we needed to do these key customizations um, and we were uh, able to do that. So um, walk through a couple of them. The, the big one is the, the design itself. Um, because we go down to an eighth of an inch, because you can say, I want um, a, a different width of mats because I can um, because you can specify different moldings, um, different treatments. Like if you want a, a special float treatment, um, that's uh, exponential explosion as far as trying to model that out in uh, in products and variants. And so we have to have extra data. Um, so we track that separately, and we use that same data model to power our rendering which is pretty neat. That brings the next one. We show those frame renderings everywhere. We, as you're designing your frame, you get to get a preview of what it looks like. When you're in your cart, every line item shows you what your artwork looks like in its frame. And even whenever you check out and in your post-purchase emails, all of that needs to show you and really connect you with your artwork. Um, we also needed to do some customization to collect and then use an extra shipping address. I can put in my home address for the packaging. Uh, Framebridge sends me a, a tube, I put my poster in, but I can put in someone else's address for the finished good as a gift or as a present. So you have to track all of the extra information there. Um, and then another interesting thing we do is this idea of um, a whole gallery wall, multiple pieces, maybe even laid out in a specific way um, and bundled together. Um, and we ended up uh, representing this as um, uh, parent-child line items. So internally, there are separate line items, uh, but they, to the customer, look like a single bundled thing. Um, and uh, generally, on the front end, we are already treating uh, Spree as this uh, headless order management system. So we've customized all of the user-facing views, um, except for some of checkout, but we're uh, doing checkout right now. So. Um, as a bonus, we are now in the retail business. We, By the end of this year, we will have 15 retail stores. These are stores where you can walk in, talk to someone about your artwork, get some expert advice, and they will help you design a frame. We're running another version of our um, app as a web app on there. 
um, a special mode made for associates, but the idea is the same. You do this design, you're doing it with the customer, you can show them the rendering of their frame, and it's adding into the cart. That makes it super omnichannel. It's adding into their cart. If they don't want to buy it right now, they can go home. It's already in their cart. Um, the same is true of our uh, native app. We have a native app. If you add there, it's on the web, it's in retail. You can start something at home, finish it out in the store, and it's just seamless 100% of the way. Um, and that is effectively because our retail is another uh, front end in a lot of ways. It's a privileged front end like an admin, um, but it is another front end. Um, an interesting challenge there is using uh, Square to take um, credit cards. So Square has a mode where you can pop out of a web app and then pop back into um, the web app once you've selected uh, taken payment. That made it so that we could keep it as a web app without having to make an entire um, native app just so that we can take payments. We have considered uh, wrapping our overall web app in a native app to make that even more seamless um, or looked at new offerings from Square like Square Terminal. Um, so we're considering some of that for the future. Hope you all are building up some questions. Um, we um, additionally have um, further internal tooling. So we have this uh, frame design tool, uh, which is really neat and helps us with design services. We can, uh, through chat and through other means, help people design frames. We also do our own manufacturing of the frames, which um, means we have an entire uh, piece of Ruby and Rails systems just dedicated to tracking manufacturing. We track a, a checklist of all of the components that go into a frame, make sure that we're scheduling them, making sure we're turning it around really fast. Um, and that gives us a lot of uh, flexibility and power. We currently actually have this as a monolithic application. So um, it's using the same database uh, and the same Rails instance, um, but is increasingly separated out from uh, the Spree core. Uh, early on, this was uh, very much uh, an extension of Spree. Increasingly, it's just another platform. We started back in 2013, 2014, and Spree let us get uh, up and running very quickly. Um, and we made some decisions early on, which were really great, but also locked us in. So a key example here is when you're adding custom artwork into your cart, um, Spree by default, if it's the same SKU, increments the quantity. This makes sense. It's the normal use case. Um, but we don't want that. You could be adding the same SKU to your cart, but it's been customized in some way. And we don't want to generate an infinite number of SKUs. So um, what we did early on was we modified the uh, add to cart to just not increment the quantity, always make a separate line item. Um, we also did some various um, monkey patching extensions in order to uh, tune other things like that, tune how we are tracking that extra shipping address, for example. Um, that also ultimately in the future here made it so that we could get really good at selling custom frames, but not so great at selling normal things. So we have a frame stand and this uh, made it kind of challenging for us to do. Uh, the other thing is we didn't upgrade. We didn't even try. We were on 2.1 and even a sub branch of 2.1 uh, for uh, quite a few years. Uh, and that made it so that we had built up enough changes that it got harder and harder to upgrade. However, we are on an upgrade path. Um, at the beginning of 2020, um, really a lot of work we did during 2019, we did the first one where we undid a lot of those uh, assumptions that we had uh, built in. Uh, this year we went to uh, from 2.2 to 3.0, um, and we are now getting set up to use uh, dual booting, which is a really neat technique where you can run two versions of Spree or two versions of Rails at the same time based on an environment variable. That's going to allow us to get much more aggressive. We're going to start going um, a new release every two months, um, though uh, based on our uh, roadmap today, we might even have to go faster than that based on their release plan for this year. Um, but we're going to be getting all the way up to the current one. Um, so the future for us is getting caught up and then really embracing this as a headless e-commerce platform. We're going to be using the um, standard um, SDK for everything that's customer facing. Um, when we have something like that add to cart, a strategy that we've realized would be a little bit better 
um, is to actually add a few uh, custom endpoints. So instead of overriding the add to cart, we need to add a um, add a custom frame to cart. That'll call most all of the same things, but it can override that core assumption that every uh, line item can increment the quantity skew. So that way we can use um, the existing SDK exactly as intended, not try to override it, not try to fight against Spree, and instead really try to extend Spree. Um, the other thing uh, for us is that we really like the admin tooling, even if they're separated out, and we don't want to re-implement all of that. Though with the uh, the uh, API oriented one, we will certainly consider it. Uh, and then a key thing is to avoid uh, monkey patching. As Spree's been upgraded, um, there's been more opportunities for hooks and uh, specific uh, target callbacks, um, and that makes it a lot cleaner for integrating in. Uh, and finally, a key thing that we're doing is uh, building that upgrading step into the roadmap. So um, always, whenever you're doing product planning, your startup, you're going to be focused on those features on that. And that works fine for a while. But eventually, um, you end up like us, where you're quite a bit behind. And you need to focus on um, keeping that on the radar so that whenever uh, Upstream Spree is doing all these awesome things, that you're actually getting all of those awesome things. So that's a big, big thing that we are increasingly dedicating um, specific resources to. And this is really true on, on any e-commerce platform that you're going to have. All of them are going to have an upgrade path, and you need to realize that you have to spend time to stay on it. Uh, great. That is uh, the key of my presentation. I'd be happy to answer questions, and I can also um, show you anything else uh, on our site. Excellent. Thank you, Brock. And uh, unless we have any questions for Brock, maybe you could actually do some screen sharing and uh, show us the website. Yeah. You all ask questions while I queue this up. Um, so from our main website, um, you can go through. Um, and we have, like I said, in addition to uh, the web, we have retail. We also do some uh, framebridge for business. Uh, so we collaborate with like uh, some hotels and things like that in order to um, build stuff out. So you can go through, you can uh, upload your custom artwork. We do some uh, detection around how uh, quality the image is in order to decide what it would be okay to print that image at. Um, so this one, I'm gonna do five inches by eight inches. Um, and then here we have, even uh, in our collection page here, you see we actually have a rendered version of this photo. So you can see what the different styles of frames are, what your piece would look like in one of these frames, um, which is really neat. And it meant that while we're on a collection page, it is still uh, customized. And this is all built using uh, Vue.js as our front end. So then we have this here, you can continue to do some uh, customization if you like. Um, and we have some advanced features in there. But ultimately, whenever you're ready, you can add to the cart. And um, from your um, actual cart page, you can see we have a little bit of flicker we can improve. Um, here also, you're getting that um, preview of your artwork. Um, and you'll end up seeing that in your um, in your checkout screen and your confirmation email and everything like that. Um, ultimately, then uh, our admin screens are similarly customized. Um, so, question is I'm new to Spree and was wondering what you mean with headless version. Can you explain? Certainly. So, um, for a lot of our site right now, uh, this screen, for example, um, is uh, getting mostly rendered using Rails views. Um, and on the server side, it is uh, doing regular Rails um, active record calls, things like that. Um, what we are looking at, and we're rebuilding our, our checkout flow here, would be to actually transform this into a single page app. So for example, if you were to hover over the cart, instead of just getting cart one, you'll actually get a, a slide out 
cart with uh, all of the details of your order and even a checkout page there. What's actually powering that, though, is a, a background API call. So your JavaScript would be calling to the standard API um, and saying, please give me a list uh, of all of your um, of all of the items in the cart. And then we've augmented that with, and here's a URL for the rendering. Here is um, other things there. Um, could you give some examples or tips to avoid monkey patching something like building services or calling them on callbacks? Yes. So um, two tips. So at some point, you might not be able to uh, avoid monkey patching. In general, if this is around an API endpoint, I would suggest considering making a separate endpoint, depending on how radically different your endpoint is. Um, second is that it's almost like when you monkey patch, uh, label it. We added a special comment to every single spot where we overrode uh, some internal spree functionality where we uh, said, this has been patched. This is why it's been patched. Um, and, um, and even ideally, here's an exact link to where the upstream code is. Um, recently, we've additionally been trying to wrap rather than overwrite um, things. So we would save the original method as an alias and then call that method um, instead of um, just completely overwriting it. So if you need to do something before it happens, you would save the original method, do your code before, and then call the rest. Uh, question is, um, do you have a microservice layer that does payment, logging, et cetera, or is it part of the main spree application? Um, so for payments, um, we are using, um, we're using uh, Braintree integration somewhere and we're using their drop-in um, widget. So this is um, pretty, pretty standard for way of for taking that. Um, for logging, we're using, um, we are currently using Datadog. So we send logs from both the server side using their out-of-the-box integration, and we're using it from the browser. So the browser can send some logs directly to uh, Datadog. So we're not quite using microservices more. We're using uh, libraries to provide those services. Yes, annotate. Annotating monkey patches is key. Um, early on, our annotation was just patched. Um, and the problem is then when we went to upgrade, it was great for knowing what we patched. However, it didn't say why. So then we would be looking at the current version or our version, looking at the old spree version, looking at the new spree version, and couldn't tell just based on the fact that it was patched, what it was, why it was patched. Whereas when we annotate it with why we're patching it, that helps a lot because then oftentimes spree upstreams upgrade makes our patch obsolete. That makes it super easy. We just delete the patch. What other questions do you have? Cool. So maybe uh, another question from me. So mm -hmm. Brooke, could you maybe elaborate a bit more on your choice to go headless and what are the pros and cons of this? Uh, because. Uh, it seems to be the future, you know, it seems to be the right approach. It gives you probably, I'm, I'm still in your funder now, but give you gives you more flexibility maybe and uh, just creative space. But uh, if you could tell us more about it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, headless sounds very uh, fancy, but I think um, a simple, uh, another way of putting this is API driven. So if you think of this as API driven, what you're really saying is, I'm going to control and make my front end experience. I'm going to uh, control the way we interact, the way we gather data. Um, I'm going to control a lot of those fine grained details. And then I'm going to turn around and get data and send data um, into Spree through their API instead of through uh, the views. And um, most everyone does this to a degree. If you have a native app, you're probably already doing this. Um, in our case, we have not only a, a native app, but we have the retail app where we need to do this. Um, and increasingly, having that division uh, between the, the front end, the Vue.js oriented application, this uh, rich interactive um, part, and the back end makes it so that you um, can move faster. So here's an example of these uh, widgets here. We have this carousel. 
Um, you can go around. It's very interactive. You have um, these things. And this is uh, a Vue.js widget. All of the data from it can either be injected um, into the Rails view um, whenever the page is loaded, or it can be um, pulled through an API. Increasingly, we want to pull it through the API. And ultimately, we are going to, um, or is it? Uh, have your cake and eat it too. Using uh, Nuxt.js, um, we can actually have these things um, be written completely in Vue.js, make it so that it feels like they're doing an API call, but it's still technically performance-wise still on the server side, which makes it so if you're uh, particularly on mobile devices, um, it goes very fast. Um, this uh, blog is our first one. This is running completely on Nuxt. Uh, the backend for this is uh, not Spree uh, currently at all, but it's all seamless and it all lives there. And this is pulling from just a headless CMS. Same kind of deal uh, where they're managing the content, um, the the future, um, the, the pages feature inside of um, Spree provide very similar functionality. And we can arrange this however we want and then do API calls. Excellent, thank you. Um... So that next question, I, I believe it's uh, directed at... Uh, Just in general. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, there, uh, there's a thing called View Storefront. Check that out. Um, and there's a couple of other uh, attempts. Um, and, and maybe if you know some other ones, Mike, uh, you can talk about them. But View Storefront is an interesting one because they're targeting um, multiple uh, backends, uh, e-commerce backends, and they have adapters. And so there's an adapter for Spree. Um, I've only done some very lightweight um, exploration of it but it's a really very forward looking concept so so what's behind what's the thinking behind your choice of uh, uh, of javascript flavor i mean uh, there are you know there are react frameworks and storefronts and view storefronts and, and probably ember store, storefronts what what's the what the thinking behind your decision yep. to go with you so we um a couple of years ago did effectively a bake-off where we uh, looked at Vue and React as our primary two. We were previously on uh, AngularJS, Angular 1. And we looked at the available frameworks at the time, did a small test application, and um, really uh, found that we liked both React and Vue pretty similarly. Um, but we liked Vue just a little bit more. So as an experiment, went ahead and built uh, some internal application in Vue. And we find it delightful. Um, it allows us to uh, componentize things in a way that fits in our mind really cleanly. Um, it allows us to move very fast. It's the feels like the right level of bundling um, the behavior and uh, display of things while not uh, while still feeling like it's providing us enough help. Um, I find that React is a great. I almost think of React as the um, the development branch of Vue, where they can explore and try new ideas, and then we, the best ones get pulled into Vue.js. Um, so to some degree, I think it is a little bit of, uh, of preference of the team. I think React is an excellent choice, um, and uh, it's very popular. Um, but both are learning from each other, which I like a lot. That makes sense. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, all right, well, thanks so much, uh, Brooke. And, uh, Guys, if you have any questions for Brock, do feel free to ask them. Do, and as a as a bonus, uh, I am hiring some software engineers here in the US. Uh, so definitely reach out to me. Uh, and my email address is brock at framebridge.com. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Thanks so much. And uh, we'll be taking it to, to the next uh, talk. Thank you so much. Thank you.